the right page. Hello, hello, everybody. Everybody joining us live and everybody joining us on the replay. I've got a really exciting episode for you today uh, because it's something that's very close to my heart. It's always making sure that we look after ourselves and you look after you uh, first and foremost. So today I've got a special guest, um, Jody, who um, I'm sure she'll explain a little bit more about who she is and what she does, but I hope what she's going to share today will help you to get a few ideas and tips to make sure that you are not feeling burnt out and overrun. So hello, Jodie. Welcome to the Equine Business TV show. How are you? Thank you very much. I'm all right. Thank you very much for having me. It's very nice to be here. Yes, it's so nice to have you. So we had a little bit of a chat earlier in the week about um, who you are, what you do, and some of the things that you, you get up to. So would you explain to um, everybody watching a little bit more about what you do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am based in Switzerland, um, but I'm originally from Zimbabwe. And um, I am at the base, at my very, very core, funny play on words, I'm a Pilates instructor. And I've been basically doing that for the past uh, 11 years now. Uh, I had a big fat career in corporate before that. And um, I basically stand by three main pillars. Um, the first one is that everything I do has to be smart. So, um, you know, to really help people, I think you have to, um, you know, correlate your offerings really completely with their needs. Um, you've got to get to the absolute crux, the core of, you know, what is bothering them. So Pilates works in quite well with that because, of course, you start from the inside and you work out. Um, and then what I really like to do as well is make things sustainable. So I believe very much in distilling things down to their essence and, um, you know, uh, giving people the absolute necessary, the bare minimum principles that are going to be useful to them. Um, and then making sure or helping people to build those into habits so they become part of your lifestyle. And then the last thing that I uh, believe in totally, and this is where it comes in with what you were saying at the beginning, is for me, um, I always try and make sure that my things are as whole being as possible. So I think the word holistic gets thrown around a lot. But I think that comes from when you have a certain, um, you know, a speciality and you look at the person from top to toe. And what I try and do is bring in a whole pile of different specialities that I've been adding to my toolbox over the years and then look at the person top to toe. So um, now when I when I when I help people, I look at things from a mindset, movement and nutritional point of view so that you get this 360 degree support and help and knowledge, basically. So it's mm -hmm. this idea of whole being health. So it's yeah. started with Pilates and it's now extrapolated to everything so what got you what what's your story like what got you into this needing to have that holistic sort of overall um yeah, sort of. yeah. well i think um you know your story very much resonated with me where you said you know you you've suffered from exhaustion and you know fatigue and all the rest of it uh me the same i've kind of had my biggest breakthroughs from when I've been on my knees, basically. So um, I was uh, a very, um, what's it, successful sports person, you could say. You know, I did high level um, diving and swimming and water polo. Um, I went to university in the UK and tried to carry on with it all as well as being a student and basically battered myself into a complete state and broke my body completely went to see an osteo the osteo said go and do some pilates and i thought oh this is so boring um but it did actually get me back to doing all the other sports so mm -hmm. i just carried on um and i was you know just did pilates in the background and then i had this big fat corporate career and was going for it and was expecting our second child in 2011 and unfortunately that baby died of still death and it was again one of those moments where you just think oh no i can't i don't know what to do and i don't know where to go and but this is awful so somebody just let me get off the planet and then uh, so then i trained to be a pilates instructor and then everything was going fine i was going for it and about maybe five or six years into that career you know i'd built a studio and i had a physical business and it was all wonderful and i just hit a wall an absolute wall 
was diagnosed with really serious burnout and went into a massive depression and you know went into self-flagellation mode and all the rest of it and again thought bloody hell can't carry on like this got to sort myself out so I pulled myself out of that and um, then the nutrition stuff has always been in the background um, my sports were always sports where you had to be super strong but you weren't allowed to be heavy uh, you know, divers, when you look at them on the board, they're all so sleek and tiny, and yet you still have to be able to spin 10,000 times before you hit the water without breaking type stuff. So the nutrition element's always been in the background, you know, how to stay slim but still stay strong and blah, blah, blah. So, so yeah, it's been, um, you know, similar to your story, really. It's it's had some really, really horrible, tough, tragic moments, um, and in a really almost sadistic way now, maybe it sounds, I wouldn't really change any of them because they've helped me to, you know, go to another level each time. And it just means that I've got this nice big toolbox now that I can use to help people with. That's kind of tried and tested from my own personal experience. Yeah, and I know, like, especially for us, not just being an entrepreneur, like entrepreneur, you put yourself up for burnout because you've got so many things that you want to do. You've got that goal driven. I want to achieve this. I want this for my business. I want this for my family. I want this for my life. And, I, and a lot of the entrepreneurs that I work with are very, um, they know where they want to go and they want to be there yesterday. <laughs> so it's kind of like, so there's all that frustration, all that overwhelm, um, all that sort of stirring inside of you so burnout is so easy to get to and then add to that most of the people that uh, I work with are equestrians and with, with being um, an equestrian it means you've got to get up no matter what no matter how you feel no matter how your body aches you've got to get up and do your horses and so many times we put them before ourselves and um, <laughs> so what tips would you give what tips would you give us um, like what what couple of things could we all do that would make a big difference in in how we yeah like well um so obviously everything you're saying I can relate to minus the horses part I have I have had a horse in the past before and I, I did I had half of the horse I owned half of the horse which the standing joke was which half anyway that was when I was quite young I was about 11 or 12 and it was very fun but then the horse got sold and so I lost my half anyway but um, you know, everything you're saying is is everything that, you know, I can relate to and everything that is basically my bread and butter. And I think what's interesting, really interesting about your peeps is, you know, you've got this glorious trifecta. You've got the trifecta of, you know, there, there's a lot of women, as you were saying. So we come along with this glorious, you know, level of complexity. Plus, we have a very good awareness of our inner workings and we're also solution seeking. So we're always on the hunt to make ourselves even better, I think. Um, then there's this idea of, you know, the woman in society and the roles that we play, you know, of usually very maternal or caregiving or connected. You know, we're the one to organize all the parties and sort out all these lovely Zoom calls with far flung family and friends that we can't see. And then, of course, as you were saying, there's this extra added element added element for your guys which is this idea of horses you know which is a very big animal very sensitive feeds into your emotions your emotions feed into it and whatever so i think um you know with this glorious you know trifecta that can be you know um really uh, rewarding but also quite exhausting and depleting um so you know you want to, you know, and as you were saying as well, when we spoke, you've been really good in helping people build an, a business that's sustainable. But what it's meant is that business has continued throughout confinement when they've trying to be being, you know, everything else. And it's like, oh, my God, you know, if I have to take another homeschool lesson and try and service my clients, I think I'm going to die. So um, I think, you know, with confinement and kids and COVID and all the rest of it, a lot of us have ended up on the wrong side of exhausted. So here is here's here is like my my low hanging fruit for this sort of situation you know when someone comes and throws themselves down at my feet and is just like oh can you help um i basically take them through a really deceptively simple um set of questions that uh creates space and unclutters the mind okay so there are there are three plus a bonus one okay so these are the things you want to ask yourself, okay? So you want to 
tap into your subconscious motivators. What really, at the essence of you, makes you get out of bed in the morning. Yes, you're saying it's the horse. Yes, you're saying you've got to do it, whatever. But I bet you some people who've got a horse still fob it off when they can. So there's something that's driving you that's that's deep in, okay? To get at that, you ask yourself the simple question, what's my why, okay? Why am I here? Why is this important? Why am I doing this? You know, why? And it, again, deceptively simple and really easy to kind of rush through this sort of thing. But you want to kind of ask yourself this, this question, what is my why? And sit with it, let it percolate for a bit. And it may take a couple of weeks and you may, you know, come out with a list that might scare you a little bit. And you might think, oof, oola, okay, that's a bit much. So then to take away the overwhelm or the kind of enormity of your why when you get to it is to ask yourself, okay, what if this were easy? Okay, you and I are both in Gemma Wendt's um, uh, membership and she asks this quite a lot. What if it were easy? What would it look like if it was easy? How can I make this easier? How can I simplify? So again, what, what this question does is kind of stop all of that overwhelm and extrapolation and enormity, yeah? That may come from the first question, which is, you know, we're very, good. we're very good at trying to make it complicated and overthinking. And yet, actually, if we go right, easy. <laughs> actually, it's it's my word on my vision board right in the middle. Eat. <laughs> I'm trying to do that with everything at the moment. But it's really hard. I mean, you do. It sounds really. Um, what's it? It sounds quite contradictory. But you have to be really disciplined with your ease. You know, it's mm -hmm. not just like, oh, well, you know, make it easy. No, you have to get your ducks in a row and then you have to keep your ducks in a row and you have to make sure that your ducks stay as three ducks, not five ducks, not six ducks, not seven ducks, that they stay in the usual pond, not the pool pond at the bottom of the left paddock or the right paddock. You know, it's like, okay, these are my ducks, this is my pond, this is my row, you know? So it does, as I say, it's really easy to kind of rush through these things and think, yeah, 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 yeah. But you really want to sit you know, I'd say, you know, over your morning tea or your afternoon tea, give yourself a good 15 minutes um, to go through this section of four questions, write stuff down, and then the next morning check that it still makes sense. And again, if you've got a vision board or whatever, you know, have it up there and keep referring back to it. Make sure it still resonates. Okay. So you've got two, you've got find your why, what if it were easy? And then the third one that I've been asking myself a lot over the last couple of months is, why is this happening for me? Okay, not why is this happening to me? Why is this happening for me? Um, this is a smart way of flipping your brain to make you to take you out of victim uh, mode, which is obviously just not a nice place to be. Yeah. And it also opens up your creative brain. So it makes you look for opportunities and it flexes your gratitude muscle. And gratitude is one of the things that the world's highest performers tap into all the time, all the time, all the time, all the time. So it just, it keeps you in control of you, puts the agency back with you. You're not a victim. This is not happening to you. There's a reason why this is happening for you. So what opportunities can you seize? Which of course, as an entrepreneur, is something we're used to doing all the time. But again, you want to make sure that it comes down from the why and the easy to the opportunities. Because yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm very good at coming up with 10,000 ideas under the shower and then thinking, but I can't do all of that. How am I going to do all of that? I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, and I just, you know, no. that, yeah, exactly. And then you're like, right, okay, we'll just go back to the basics. The basics are really good, by the way. Okay. And then the, so that's three questions. Find your why. What if it was easy? Why is this happening for me? Okay. And then the last question that I love to ask myself because I'm a giver and a, and a helper and a coach and a healer and a, oh, such a nice person is what if nobody gave a shit? Seriously. What if nobody gave a shit? Because what that helps you do is put yourself back in the middle. So you put yourself back in the center of your own command center, which is very nice because what it does is give you more clarity on your own values, give you more kind of an amplification of your own identity within, you know, the greater context of you being a nice person. And it doesn't come from this idea of selfishness, but rather from self-esteem. You know, you are worthy of being your own priority and that's okay. That's totally okay. So on days when you just think, ah, 
that's okay you're allowed to think that you know yeah. um so so that's it those are my three plus one questions of really easy low-hanging fruit simple exercise but as i say deceptively simple because you'll be happily surprised and hopefully not overwhelmed by the answers that come out yeah and then you just keep sense checking yeah no, I, I like that i've never i've never i've never got to the point where i've said well what if nobody gave a shit like what is is that more from like what if nobody cared what i did or yeah so mm -hmm. in other words no one no one gives a shit so you can basically post whatever you want because no one gives a shit you can wear whatever you want you can do whatever you want you can say whatever you want you can earn whatever you want you can charge whatever you want because no one gives a shit yeah <laughs> and it's really liberating you know you just think actually i'm just going to write this facebook post and do this live now and post all of that stuff on instagram because no one's watching yeah and i yeah and i think sometimes you've just got to go no this is what's this is what's coming out and i'm just gonna let it out rather than um yeah holding it all in and thinking oh if somebody doesn't like me or what if i look bad or what if my hair is terrible yeah yeah absolutely. yeah yeah and i think people the people that matter to you don't have time to be judgmental and nasty mm. so they really don't give a shit they love you you're great you do a great job and the rest uh, just doesn't matter you know yeah. so you know, before we got on here, you were like, oh, wait, my camera's not great. You know, maybe I should turn my light. I was like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> so neither should you. Yeah, and, and, and if you're watching, you'll probably know that I'm not sitting where I normally sit to do these because my, my computer crashed. So I had to quickly resort to jumping onto my laptop. And the quality's not as great. And so I was a bit like, oh, I've got to move. Can we get more light? It's not working. So I think, yeah, I think we all kind of, of get that. But, yeah, so what's more important is, is sort of showing up and – Doing totally called to do so you've got something sort of coming up uh, very very soon haven't you which is sort of called embrace the grace tell us more about that jody i do actually um so wait let me find my script for that so that i can make it sound really really good hang on uh where is it oh yes this is it okay so um so uh this is like my bread and butter you know as you can tell I'm really passionate about this sort of stuff. I could talk about it for years and years and years, but I might save your listeners the sound of my little voice, you know, for years and years and years. But uh, basically, I will be going deeper, be diving deeper and showing um, women in particular how to build a life that they don't need to take a holiday from, which is kind of handy right now because none of us are snorkeling in the Maldives at the moment, I don't think. Mm -hmm. We'll be lucky if we get to Malaga at this rate. Anyway, it's um, the aim of the course is it's four weeks long. I'll be going live to teach the lessons, um, which will probably be about 10 or 15 minutes long. And they'll probably be about once or twice a week. It's a beta course. It's the first time I'm running it and I'm going to run it with the participants. So it'll give people a really good um, opportunity to shape the content of the course. I've got a guiding thread and then I can easily pull in what people are asking for as I go. And I like building out courses like this. It makes them really useful for the participants. Um, the idea is that it'll give you a quieter, more relaxed way of being. Um, it'll help you to tap into profound positivity so that you don't feel so like up and down, up and down with the roller coaster that we're all on at the moment. Less kind of, you know, um, fractious, less noise. Um, you get to unplug from the clutter in your mind and in the media, which is always handy. Um, I'm going to show you how to take uh, really quick, so rapid rejuvenating breaks, and that'll tap into my Pilates training and distill the very best of restorative movement and put it into sequences for you. Um, I'm expected about I'm expecting about 100 to 200 people, so it'll be a nice, small, uplifting community that you can wrap your arms around. My doorbell's rung. Never mind. And there's someone to answer it. My, my butler's my butler's going to do it. Also known as my husband. <laughs> no, you can't. You have to hold the hound. You have to hold the hound. <laughs> there we go 
Ta -da. So, um, in the middle of my spiel. So, yeah, so about 100 to 200 people. Um, so it'll be a nice, you know, uplifting community that you can get your arms around. It's not going to be like thousands and thousands of people. Um, but the idea is that, you know, there is this community element. element. People can feel um, supported and, um, you know, uh, with like-minded people. And um, it runs from, it's free. And it runs from July the 27th, which is not this Monday coming, the following, until August the 21st. And yeah, as I said, it's all online, um, short video lessons. The idea is to be entertaining, informative and inspiring. Yeah, so uh, look, it sounds it sounds absolutely awesome. I have popped the link in the comments. So if anybody wants that, um, or if you can't see it, just leave us a comment below and say, can you tell me more? And uh, I'm sure me or Jodie will come back and make sure that you've got the link and if you've got any questions on that. So I think you've shared some awesome insights there i really love the, the question so just to recap so what the question number one <laughs> i'm gonna try and remember them now so question number one this is where my brain goes mm, what was your first question i forgot find your why find your why yes yeah. so once you've got your why then how can you make it easy what if this was easy yeah and then question number three why is this happening for me yes why is it happening for me and then number four is what if nobody gave a shit <laughs> so yeah. yeah see i'm gonna remember those um so for anybody else watching um or if they're watching after your course has already started um jody where else can they find you online um, they can go to my website, which is littlebirdpilates.ch, because I'm based in Switzerland. Um, all of the information is there, and, you know, I'm easy to get hold of. Otherwise, I'm at Jody Woodford on um, Facebook, or Little Bird Pilates on Facebook as well. Fab. So I'll make sure that I tag you in um, so that yeah, anybody can find you and follow you. But thank you so much for sharing that insight with us today. Um, that's, yeah, it's really uh, yeah made me rethink a little bit. And I think sometimes we all need that. And one of the things that I'm often saying to people is we've ne we never stop learning. We never, ever stop learning. And and it's about community and coming together and and supporting each other and so i love the, that you're you're doing that with your with your new course um so I, I will do my best to make sure that i hop on that as well because i know like especially like this week and um, one of the things that I've, I've said like even this week i felt so drained so tired and i'm in so so much need of a break um because yeah, we just go 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 all the time and it can be really hard to to shut off even though i love what i do i absolutely love it sometimes it can still be exhausting can't it so yeah I think exactly i think it's we're lucky in that we get to choose because it gives us you know so much freedom but in that freedom we have to be really really careful because the exhilaration quickly turns to exhaustion yeah. you know and your do 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 just becomes depletion you know it's just like oh there's nothing left you know and that's something i can't afford you know i've got three young kids um plus a dog as you heard and a husband yeah. so you know it's it's not an option for me no no it's hard so yeah trying to find that balance um is something i think we all need to, to do so any way that we can we can find that and and i think it's a case of yeah try everything isn't it try absolutely everything until you find what works and don't yeah give exactly then systematize it and make it a habit brilliant well thank you so much for joining us today jody no uh, problem thanks really for the opportunity great. i'm looking forward to the next session next bit seeing people online that'd be great yes yes it'll be awesome and hopefully yeah, I'll, I'll get this shared out um so if anybody's got any questions do uh, pop them so tracy says she absolutely loves this <laughs> so thank you tracy and allison yeah, re was really enjoying it as well but she had to go and um, but it certainly made her think so thank you for that and uh, Teresa says yeah so true um regard to your exhilaration and exhaustion which it absolutely is because we yeah, we're so on the go. We're so excited for it. But there's a lot of mental energy required for that. level. <laughs> totally. And I think sometimes we forget we we forget it's not just physical. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. 
it's mental energy as well so yeah and i'll be showing people how you can use the physical to boost the mental without it being like some mad cardio class as well and i think it's something that your audience will really appreciate because it'll come from the core which of course is is something that you know most riders should have you know the balance the poise the the inner stillness and the awareness of those you know deep postural muscles that can make your ride well can make or break your ride basically yeah yeah, yeah. So I know it'll be, it'll be massively helpful. So do make sure you click on Jodie's link, uh, which I have popped in the comments, which is the course is dot little bird pilates dot ch forward slash embrace the grace. And um, if you've got any questions or anything, feel free to add them in. We'll make sure that we come back and answer them later. Um, but thank you for joining us, everybody, today. And thank you, Jodie. Thanks, Jenny. See you. Bye. Bye. -bye.